The 2021 Chess Tour will be the first time the world's best chess player is determined over a full online season. This tour will not only reinvent the sport, it will also reinvent how chess is broadcasted to a wide audience. To do so, we will create an amazing show. We are now looking for the best English-speaking talent out there to be a part of this. You will be instrumental in making chess interesting and exciting entertainment, also for viewers with only basic chess skills. You will fill this studio with drama and enthusiasm when you give a global audience the excitement, time trouble, the genius moves, and the inevitable blunders. Can you see yourself as part of this team? Do you want to be part of building something never before seen in chess? Send us a screen test and show us some examples of the work you are most proud of. You are live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the final of the Group G, uh, where I'm playing against the Russian GM Sam Shurigov and you see it. Let's go. So we played, we've never played a classical game. Let's start with my dragon and see what happens. Yeah, a classical over the board yeah. game against each other, but uh, uh, no dragon in the first round. Yeah, we'll get one later. But we played once in the title Tuesday thing. Which was a draw and he beat me, ground me down. Oh. Uh, hang on, let me think. I lost a horrible game in this line to the one for Sydney. Not other man a few years ago. So uh, let's be a bit careful. Yeah, he beat me in the World Open this year, which was online. Uh, there are only 45s. I decided to switch out for this one. Let's play normally. I think I played Knight before against the wrong and got into all kinds of trouble. It doesn't feel like the kind of position that that should lose immediately, but I succeeded in that game. Uh, now what?
Let's just play some sensible moves. Always question where the rooks are supposed to go in these positions. Should I play this rook from f8 to e8, d8? Am I trying to play for d5 break? b5 break? White's generally got this bind and should be a little bit better, but black equalizes if black is accurate. On the other hand, at least he has to watch out the whole time for these breaks. That's not the end of the world if I just sit there. Okay, let's just play a waiting move. My idea is I'm threatening knight b4, hitting this pawn. And I don't think he can go knight d5, or at least knight d5, knight d4, and he's calculating. Looks like it works for me. I'm expecting knight g5, hitting my queen. And I was just going to drop back again to d7. I might be able to go forward, but the knight looks a bit strange on g5, especially once he's just played with d1. If that rook were back, then he f4 kind of attacks would be a bit scary. So yeah, we'll just have to see. Last year, he performed extremely well in the Vance of Blitz Cup for eventually coming unstuck against Magnus. Uh, and I'll try and stop him before then. Okay, we'll just... Going forward is interesting, but I don't want to get my queen trapped in the first game. C5 is an idea in these positions as well, using the pin. I'm hoping this position is a bit loose. I can just play knight e5, hitting his queen, and then grab the ball. So he gets out of that pin. Uh, okay, try to push him back as well. A little dance, and I'll try again. This time it's not clear what my threat is. Um, I'm hoping I'm stopping the most natural move, b3, defending his c4 pawn because the knight takes e4 and action down the long diagonal. So he gets out of that. Now, do I want to start exchanging things? Yeah, I don't see a better square. He can choose whether to exchange. Pawn takes is sometimes fun in these lines, but I think I've got the wrong bishop for pawn takes. It looks incredibly ugly. The idea is that you get the d4 square as an outpost. But I don't think my pieces are on the right squares. Yeah. But yeah, I'm just trying to make it hard for him to make a move, basically. So yeah, I think that was probably the right one. He's getting ready to play b3. I want to be able to react to b3 with d5. He just plays E takes, I think. So instead, I'll try for B5. So how is it? B3, B5. Okay, he again is getting ready to play B3. Maybe also getting ready to play that D5. Time for B5. Yeah. And they said the NC general, they want to play one of these breaks. I guess he's going to take. So queen takes, reaches some interesting ending where he has two connected fast pawns and I've got the central pawn mass. I don't have queen takes. I think I might have had the sneaky root take c3. If that trick works, I would love to wait another move and see if I can get it. If rook c4, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to achieve Rook c4, b3. Do I want to provoke b3? Okay, that's, I'm not sure if I do. Uh, but I want to stay ahead on the clock. Even with two second increment, it's, uh, 
You shouldn't really lose on time, although it managed to win one game last time on the clock, but it's more that uh, it's impossible to calculate for any normal human with two seconds of move. You just have to play natural looking moves. Now it's becoming sharp. He's going to jump the knight into d5. Where do I want my knight? e4, d7, or h5? e4 is a bit loose, but knight e4, knight d5. What's going on? Okay, let's just jump back and try and win this one. My knight takes e7 would be careless to allow, so I'll defend that. I'd like to get the queens off, but I think knight c7 would be annoying at the end. Okay. Again, queen takes knight c7 was not something I wanted. So knight e5, bishop d4, do I have any clever move there? Hmm. I really don't want one saying e5 for long. Let's move it again. A random position now. Uh, again, he's throwing knight c7. Have I hang a piece? No, I can go this way. Knights are such a tricky piece. Mm -hmm. I really want to get my knight in. Are we getting some bizarre draw? Knight e5, knight. C7. It's looking like it. No, oh, he's playing for more. Okay, I need my knight in on D3, blocking his rook out of the game. So I'm pawing up, uh, but his bishop is better. With one to both sides of the board. I really don't know what's going on here. <laughs> These points are scary. Let's hope my king gets across to help in time. Mm. Okay, so I'm now still a pawn up, but he's got the outside pass pawn as well. So I don't think I'm better. So anything can happen. I'm sure it objectively should be drawn. I'm get ready to push my e pawns now. If he goes after my g pawn, then I'll just push. Uh, so e3 he'll take. Okay, let's get rid of his bishop. I'm not sure where I'm going with my king. His king is getting in too quickly. Now the king of born ending is not good for me at least. So uh, swap those. I can probably play on a few moves still. My extra pawn shouldn't be uh, decisive here. Problem is my king is cut. Wait to move. Yeah, now it's just a draw. I don't think I've got any funny business. Let's just exchange those ones off. Okay, so uh, sorry, my commentary got a bit uh, disjointed there. As I'm both down to seconds. Yeah, for the draw. Play king be king. Yeah, incredibly complicated position with my extra pawn. I think if I could play one or two more accurate moves, I might have had some winning chances. But similarly, he also uh, switch color 
my board again. Uh, he also must have had good winning chances at various points. A warm up game for both of us. And a half half. Okay. This hybrid variation. What line shall I try? Let's go for this move order. Try and remember this pawn sacrifice. A little birdie revealed it to us, uh, the English team, when we're playing in one of the Olympiads or European teams. So it feels quite dangerous. Let's see if I can remember. He snapples a pawn and I uh, try and get some play down the e file. I think I have to play slightly differently whether he exchanges pawns on d4 or not. But once he crabs on e4, I'm playing d5. He challenges my bishop immediately. I don't remember what I'm supposed to do. Taking his knight looks tempting. Okay, so I push forward. And now I think I'm going to defend this way. So yeah, the idea is that it's a bit tricky for him to serve this king. And I've got ideas down the e-file and also some tricks of queen a4 in certain positions. Let's see. And pawn is probably worth a minute as well in blitz. So. Everything's worked for now. Tell anything about how he's rearranging his forces. But I um, don't think the move order actually matters so much. I'm playing rookie one next. And then trying something or other. What an, if he exchanges it on bishops and then knights, then I might be able to utilize this queen a4 trick. Okay. Uh, he's offering me to play knight to v5. I won't bother. So now I'll grab this pawn. I think if, sometimes I want to take that with the knight, but I wasn't sure how I was getting across. And do I want d6 here or just or some other way of doing it? Um, okay, let's just another. Yeah, I wasn't sure whether d6 d6 helped me. That one might just be a weakness. So if I take, I think he has to get the queen now. Knight takes which takes e7 should be working. And let's just, I'm just trying to make sure I don't wander my rook to some, some tactic. I have a feeling I'm supposed to get a bit more than this. Maybe uh, taking on e5 immediately was a bit inaccurate. But okay. Do you want those off? Depends if I can hold on to my deep one happily. Uh, yeah, okay, let's exchange those. And then I'll just come back to e1 and. I want to argue that his bishop is not so good because my pawn on c3 is blocking it. But yeah, I've definitely misplayed this. I think I've lost my opening advantage. But on the other hand, I still have my time advantage. So I'm going to try and get my knight on a3 back into the game without allowing any tricks with queen a4. Uh, 
So, or any bet rank tricks. Let's just sell with Jeepers. I'll probably play H4. And, okay, go to my pack. I wasn't sure if I wanted it on E5 or E3, but B5 sort of stopped. But the plan of E3 and uh, V5 anyway. So I'll try and use this knight to cement my D5 ball. I'd love to be able to get some D6 trick in at some point. D6 take, knight D5. Let's just go H4 first. That is on my radar. At the moment, I think he can react with Queen F5. That's also on his. <laughs> so he's not allowing uh, that plan. Don't want E3 or F4. No, it doesn't make so much difference. So I'm looking at playing A4 and trying to get some squares. Yeah, let's go for it. That was probably a good response. So now if I go queen e2, rook d6, knight c4, he takes knight 4 knight b6. Mm. Okay, I'll play queen e2. I don't have to win knight c4. Let's follow up. That seemed to be working for me. I win his, I think he has to give his queen, but he gets rook from four. It's not clear how to evaluate that position. He's not allowed it. Now, I don't want to play c4 because it gives them lots of squares for that bishop. So let's, I would like to keep the c4 square available for my knight. Turn this way. So he's getting ready to play c4 himself. B3 is a bit of a drastic solution. So let's just get out of the pin. Now he's attacking my rook too many times. Mm. Have to be careful about some C4 here. Looking a bit pinned here. Let's just bend this way. Just to get out of that pin. It's both very long time. You can probably take my point on C3, right? Uh, he doesn't. I didn't want him to have that task for him, so. This pawn. If he exchanges queens, it's probably drawn, but I have the extra pawn so I can try. Start pushing that pawn. Be careful about my back rank. Let's just cover that with my rook. Ideas of fork there. Is that? Uh, I think it was anyway. Oh, I've dropped my paw. That was careless. I was trying not to blunder a piece, but I don't think I can keep this pin, unfortunately. Oops. Ah, that was ridiculous. Huge blunder. Ah, very careless. Pressing and yeah, just uh, tried a bit too hard then. Had some very good win chances. Need to play a bit faster and not get into that kind of time tripping. Any switches? Doesn't fancy any more, but should be five chips. Okay, let's see what he's got prepared here. Okay, London system. Very topical. Imagine that he can do the same moves because they need luck. Set up. 
what move order I was going to play. I also developed my pieces. There's a lot of subtleties here, like after a4, whether I'm supposed to allow a5 or play a6 so I can meet a5 with b5 or just block it like this. This is a fairly normal position. I play 94 because I want to play e5 next. Imagine he'll exchange a pair of knights. I play e5. Here we go. Is bishop f3 a problem? I don't think so, but I don't think it makes much difference. Whether I, uh, if I play e5, he could exchange knights and play knight d2 anyway. I don't want to give him that long diagonal. I think I've probably had this position in quite a few blitz games before. I think it should be equal. After all, neither side has had to make any real concessions. Yeah, overall, apart from the score in the match, it's going quite well. Uh, careless blunder by me, but those happen in blitz. The real mistake was uh, losing a bit of control and playing a bit too slowly. Okay, let's just get rid of these bishops. My queen on long diagonal. Just get ready for him swapping there. Well. Yeah, I'm down in the match, but uh, there's still a long way to go. So a draw with black is fine. If I can play for more, I will. But what's his idea here? Okay, not quite sure what that knight is doing there. Provoking me to play queen d5, though, which would be careless with de on the board. So I guess he wants to threaten at least to exchange everything. So shall I just push him back? Then does he have a bit of pressure? Let's play a subtle move. Subtle moves are normally wrong. But My idea is to defend my rook on d8 so that after, if I play d5 now and we exchange everything, then my rook is defended on d8. He can still play c4. Is he throwing anything? I don't think he is. d knight takes. I'm going to defend it enough times. If in doubt, play h5, move the h1. I do need a plan though. So let's change things a bit. Double edge plan. I've got a weakness on c7 now that he can target. But I'm hoping to use some outposts this night, this counterplay. Maybe he has to even be a bit careful about his queen in some positions. The knight b4 and his queen has the g5 square, but no other squares. Yeah, so he runs away. Okay, uh, it's a bit of a shame to attack that rook because uh, I quite like where my knight is. But I don't know what my plan is. Well, probably I want my queen to be a bit more involved. I don't have any way of attacking. I always want to attack. Let's just wait a moment. Make him come up with the move. Everything is defended. 
So defend the C7 pawn. Okay, so he's coming around to try and attack it again. I'm enough of this random maneuvering, but let's go for it on the king side. He should move his knight away from that side of the board after all. I don't know if I'm achieving anything really, but uh, try to make him blink over there. Going a bit all in here after the slow start. Am I threatening knight takes e3? Exchange. <clears throat> Rook e2. He's got g5 and a lot of positions. He's just getting, trying to defend against that and also preparing to double. Very logical. Now, I would like to go f5, f4, but I can't really with where my king is. Mm. Okay, let's just push. So rook c1, queen b7. This bishop takes d6, but I think I just have to allow bishop takes d6. Yeah, this, I'm not very happy with my position here. So I just have to cling on. Brother here in the background. Wesley has his cat to help him. I've got my dog. Okay, gone for it. So I think I've, can I go to d7? He takes my knight. Rookie six. If I can, I prefer the d7 square. Uh, rook c6, rook d8. I think I can. Which probably means I can't. But if he takes a rook, I prefer my queen to be centralized on d7 rather than a8. Okay, what have I missed? We have rook c8. This is idea. And then I go to rook c6. You can still go, now rook c8 can just take. So he's sacrificing his knight. Okay. And take on a5 or exchange queens. Okay, it's going to be very difficult to hold on to all my pawns here. Do I try? Uh, I guess I might as well try. I'm expecting. I'm slightly surprised that he didn't go after my a pawn faster. So, okay, I just need to move. I rook round the better rank. So he blocks that. Bring my king in. I guess those central pawns will start moving soon enough. Let's try not wandering this time. Forward or back? We'll go back. So now f5, e4, and pawns get exchanged. Rooks get exchanged. How many forces does he have? <laughs> I don't know what to... You can go e5, but... Uh, he can still play f3, can't he, to get this out. He's got so many pawns. Anything could happen. My pawns are gradually disappearing. But I'm happy to play Rook and Bishop versus Rook if I can get there. I'm not sure what I'm doing with. Still quite a long way off. It's very annoying Rook. Come down in a circle. I'm giving up trying to spend that one. I'm just trying to get rid of some of this. Yeah, 
the main priority is not to let those pawns queen. Anything else is a bonus. Should I have gone the other way? Who knows? What am I doing to B7 now? Weird position. The ones at least have dropped gradually. Be hard to win the final one. First, I just need to make sure I don't lose on time. Am I allowing slightly dangerous one I'm doing. If I go forward, he goes. I do is King C6, but Rook H6 check. Be careless. So it's just a draw. Probably again, I had some chances. At least to get Rook and Bishop, which is unpleasant to defend. Okay, now with only two seconds to move, even if uh, objective it should be drawn. He switched, he didn't want that line again. Caro. Still cooler than I sat down. Okay, let's try this line. I'm recommending my book. But the problem with all these lines I'm recommending is I can never remember how they go. So, 2 1 down. Probably after three promising positions. But the last one was a complete mess. Yeah. Had so many pawns that uh, it was difficult to keep track of all of them. I was just getting too low on time. Uh, all right. I remember how I'm supposed to do this. Is it C4? Try exploit to the T, so a bit slow in his development. This like some sort of pan off Botvinnik attack, but where my bishop is out on B5 rather than uh, B3 where it normally is. So, for example, if you went DC here, if I recapture, I think we're back into some main lines, although he's committed his bishop to D7 which isn't ideal for him. Because often he wants to be in check with that vision. He has taken. D5 is the other option. Can I go for the third option? So how is it? D5, we exchange everything. It should be seven. Or I can start with rookie one. With similar ideas. You can go knight a5 against both, I suppose. Although it looks very risky to me. Or maybe knight b4. Okay, let's play d5. Hesitated for almost a minute there and didn't really calculate anything at all. Just. Uh, a die going around in my head. Generally, the worst case scenario in these things is that we just reach an equal middle game. I don't think it's one and C4 should be the thing. So I guess he'll, it probably doesn't matter. Taking with the knife looks a bit strange because it gives me a free tempo. I don't miss the, oh, and of course he does. 
etc. This exchange I have to take on d5. But presumably his idea is he's going to bishop e6 if I don't. Okay, we'll just take anyway. Also successfully made me think rather than just autopilot recapture. Now can I just make him delay castling again? If he had enough time to play castle and bishop e6, he would be absolutely fine here. So I'm trying to use my initiative. So for example, here I think I'm playing knight e5. If nasty mate threats and after the exchange, a bad pin. If queen c7, I'll go bishop f4. So maybe queen c8, getting out of the pin and preparing bishop e6. Then do I have a good move? So a6 instead. Okay, so his idea, if I take on c4, is to play bishop e6. That's quite a clever move because my rook isn't defended on d1. So I go knight e5 now. If he takes, take on g7 isn't worth a piece. Knight g5 looks fun, but maybe he just castles. And then I can take on c4. Okay. Fun. And doesn't appear to lose on the spot, so I'll play it. That's normally my uh, my usual thinking in blitz, if not in classical chess as well. Okay, so now I was hoping that taking, let's just check I'm not losing, I don't have anything clever. He's always taking on g5, five. If I take on d7, yeah, okay. So now bishop e6 isn't possible. Being the difference. I don't count with bishop g4, maybe. Knight takes f7, queen takes d5. Is that working for him? It's really annoying my rook isn't defended on d1. Otherwise, a move like bishop g4, queen e4 would be working. Bishop four, knight takes h7. Looks good, but can't. Looks fun, but can't be good. I can go queen takes f7 check. Bishop four, queen f7. If king h8, I've got the beautiful. Okay. King h8, queen g8, and mate. Queen f7 takes bishop takes. King moves somewhere. I take, and I come back to b3. I've picked up a pawn. I'm not being mated immediately. Yep, again, looks fun. Doesn't seem to lose on the spot. Play it. Okay, I have to stop rook d1, mate. I have to keep my bishop safe. Now, what can I start with? h3 for some luft. I would like to go 96 check, but my mate was annoying. I have to show five. I'm still ninety six. Swap check. H two. Can I get out of the pin? I'm not sure. Uh, so do I just retreat? I could also play G four. An exchange. This knight comes into d4. Wow, I'm running out of time. Okay. I commented in uh, earlier streams, but the problem when the position gets interesting, I uh, start to think far too long. Unfortunately, now that he's got full compensation for the pawn, I think, with this bishop here. Let's just take the seventh. Hope my rook's not getting trapped. Oh, okay. Almost blundered a piece. Need to be very careful with my rook on. C7, though, some rook checks and bishop e5 checks. Okay, I'm certainly not better anymore. If 
a draw. Looks like another one that got away. But it's only going away for half a point at the moment, then. I can continue. Pressing, and I don't need to worry too much about the match. The other a draw, which I declined because. I wanted to see if he allowed me to get a past pawn, which he has. I guess it doesn't make any difference, but still, I can pretend to play. Okay, let's exchange those pawns if he wants. Probably he should come back. So he takes, okay, he's done. You can't get the normal drawing position here. This rook is very clumsy. Ah, that was a stupid move by me there. I missed rookie four check. That no, was just a dead draw. No, I'm sure it was drawn anyway, but uh, I've offered to triple back. <laughs> So ridiculous position to be playing now. Okay, there we go. So how is that? I've had two of each color, so it must be two and a half, one and a half to him. And this after I blundered in the yeah, position I was trying to win, that became a dead draw position. He's going to repeat the London. Okay, I managed to make. Fireworks from the London last time, but uh, probably only fireworks in my position. I switched his move order. Interesting. Um, trying to figure out what position is a bit strange. Okay, let's. C5. Normally, A4 is only played once the B1 is moved, I think. I'm not an expert on the London. So he's trying to claim my bishop is bad on C8. I could do with conjuring up some initiative here. Let's play the counterintuitive B6. Looks like it was exactly what his plan was aimed against. But I'm hoping to take back with a queen and attack pawn on b2 before he's quite ready to defend it. So maybe he doesn't bother taking my pawn. Yeah. Okay, well, grab anyway. It's become very sharp again for a luncheon. And at least London does have its dull reputation, but all the pieces remain on the board, so you get quite a lot of life in the position. It might just not happen immediately in the opening, but uh, be a bit slower. Now, let's wait. If I went bishop a6, which is the move I wanted to play, he could go knight takes a5. Because my bishop is hanging. At the moment he can't take on a5, I think, because b2 is hanging. But then I can't play bishop a6 either. So I could go bishop b7. Then I guess he will take on a5. My bishop is blocking my rook. Let's try knight. B6. Does this work? So again, I've blocked my rook, so he can go knight to a5, but I'm hoping knight d5 is a bit awkward for him. Attacking the pawn on b2 and attacking this bishop on f4, which he really doesn't want to exchange for a knight. 
particular position is starting to open. So, yeah, he declines any of that. But should we get one pair of knights? Do I want one pair off? I do think. Whether I want bishop e6 immediately or without, or after an exchange. Let's exchange first. I couldn't figure out because now I've given him the additional option of defending the pawn on b2 with queen d2, but I don't think it works. I'm throwing cd. So it's nice hanging. I'm throwing to take on c4 and take on d4, which is also a big threat. So rook a4 is a way of defending against it, but it feels quite shaky. Then I can actually go knight. Bring the other knight round to d5 and to b6. He has, if he wants it, dc, queen takes, knight takes d6. But it looks like it shouldn't work. And even if it does, at the end, I'm going to have bishop and knight for rook. He's not even going to have any pawns for it. So that looks quite bad. Maybe b3 will be what, no, then 95 again. <clears throat> uh, he can take them and take on a5 with the rook, can't he? This is what, is this what he's doing? I don't know whether I could have started with c4, but I prefer to keep my bishops if I can. So, I c7 was my idea, let's see. I don't necessarily have to defend this pawn on a7, or is queen c7, I think he has to go, and maybe he'll go queen a4. So I can also go to c6 or c8. Let's go to c6, a bit random. So this knight is still hanging. And swapping a7 for b2 is very good for me. He defends this way. Now I'm going to move the knight from f6. Do I go knight d5, bishop back, and exchange these knights? Now let's try something a bit different. Knight d7. I still have an idea of extension that's in b6. So he moves it now to c7. He has to deal with this b2 pawn again. My knight's going to jump to probably to c5 with tempo. And I don't think it's so easy to find a good way of defending this pawn in b2. So he's using his time. It does it this way. So I can kick it back again. I don't think he wants to allow knight d3, so probably queen d2. Now we do have a nice way of forcing stuff. So I attack the queen again, he goes back to c1. I'm playing too slowly. Use my time. I think I probably should have started with that. So he's one. Okay, he's going to jump into c6, but I'm attacking b2. And just C3 not hanging as long. We have two pawns. I'm going to have a rook, can't I? Okay. That's a choice what to take. 
don't. Yeah, as long as you can go on the long term. Oof, so I got back in there. I have to keep a bit ahead on time. And uh, the pressure on the B2 form was too much. Practical game, not on time. So this is game six, I believe. And uh, we're all square at two and a half all. And he's back to the Sicilian. Let's see which Sicilian. I'd be very happy to repeat that point sack again. So I think I misplayed it, but so it was it's not promising. to G6. C3 is a slightly unusual move order, but these days. So we're going to go through the typical structure. White's going to grab the center. Okay, grab this. Make sure I don't blunder anything. Uh, and he'll try and counter against it. He'll play some d5 break. And I'll go e5, and then it's really the question of whether I can successfully keep his bishop on g7 out of the game. And whether this knight on e4 is a strength or a weakness. Like, it looks very good. But if I didn't have a knight on f3, then f3 traps it. So this is an idea. Um, if I try it now, knight e1, f6. I'm not sure that's going to be quite hard to collect, but I feel like you can have this position. So it's a bit annoying, I can't remember. The intricacies of how I'm supposed to do it. Uh, I don't want to think too long about it. Okay, let's just defend the pawn. A bit annoying. Yeah, it's slightly more common to have this position with the rook on e1 and queen on d1. That's quite a main line. And queen on e2 gives slightly more options, such as this knight back. So now if I go knight e1, can he use the some discovered attack? Knight takes d4, for example, bishop d4, queen b5, and then the knight is escaping. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay, let's just defend that bishop. Slightly ugly looking that move. If I can keep the center, then I'm better. So, so on that, that's a slightly strange move to me. I thought that he would be playing with f6. Is it time? To this threaten something with 91. I think I'm probably forcing f6 now. And then what's happening? F3, knight g5. I take it. I don't think he has any thing with knight d4. I don't have to react to f6 either. Can I start with knight d3, for instance? His bishop is hanging, so there's no knight to d4. Let's try it. Very sharp position. And again, I think I've misremembered my theory, but I have an interesting position. It's quite nice to keep f3 in reserve. He'll have to be looking at every move. I could also retreat. My idea was to take this. 
but I don't see why I can't retreat. There's nothing to stop me taking next move. But I have ideas of bishop e3 as well and hitting the weak pawn on d5 and his king. Then we'll be a bit exposed. Of course, if I move the bishop away from the diagonal, I have to watch out for knight to d4s. So king it shaped, but then oh, he's gone this way. Okay, that's attack the pawn. Sort of threaten to attack the pawn. I know Screen is defending it for now. So expect him to move the king. Right, the guard attack this pawn again. Knight f4 or knight c5, I've not decided. Or do I then play f3, knight g5? Oh, now that is a really bizarre move. Uh, so I kick the knight away. This queen doesn't have a square at night, does it? Ah, oh, this is his idea. Very cunning. But okay. I can pick up the d5 pawn here. Which should be good. Let's just exchange those first. Back. The position is still very complicated, but it should be good for me. Okay, and I just have to make sure I don't spend too much time figuring out how. Uh, so bishop f4, he takes on b3, we swap. Or I can go knight e5. Okay, let's go knight e5. And any nice moves here, like bishop g5. Don't see it exactly. Let's just get rid of the bishop. Tempting to sack. Pawn for uh, to try and break through. Yeah, I'm going too short on time. The game is becoming random. Might be two, it's annoying. Now he said he's got some squares, his pieces. It's both of us just shuffling and trying to. Slowly improve. Can I break through now? Now, did that work? I hope. Using some material here. I think everything's hanging in this position. Okay. Yeah, broke through. It got very messy. I think I was pawn up with the winning position and then I pawn up for good conversation. So, uh, certainly not clear, but the opening went quite well. And I managed to take the lead for the first time. Um, game seven, having to do quick maths. It's not difficult maths, but. Uh, Game seven, I guess, means it's three and a half, two and a half to me now. Is he going to play the same line? He doesn't believe in my concept. It worked quite well for me, though. I was considering maybe I should have started with b6, which more or less forced. OK, we'll have the same thing. If he goes a5, I guess he won't. So we have a slightly different structure to the first two London. Good to see that uh, 
the mere prospect of me playing the dragon has put him off playing one e4. He wanted to grind me down again in some Berlin structure, like he got last time in the world open. Okay, we'll play the structure again. Not as good a version for me, because my bishop is in the way. But again, it's quite sharp. For example, some queen a4, rook b8, queen a5 exchange. I'd probably take an f3 and take on b2. This is similar, I suppose. I'll indirectly defend the pawn, or at least for some concession if he's going to take it. I do have to watch out for these knight f3, six ideas, excuse me. I don't really believe it should work. So bishop a6, knight takes a5 is the idea he had last time. So we'll try bishop d5. I don't really mind exchanging my light square bishop for that b2 pawn. I don't think. So that b2, c3 becomes vulnerable. And if c3 is vulnerable, then there's quite good prospects for my bishop on g7. Okay, so he waits. Now, if I go queen c7, rook takes a5, can I take on b2? Well, I'll play queen c7, and if he takes, I'll track the grout. So if he recaps on b2, I'll take the loose rook. I think I can. He doesn't go for it. Okay, so time to try and get some of these knights off the board. But my knight with d7 isn't doing very much at the moment. So rook a5, rook b2, rook c5, knight c5, knight b2 is complicated. Materials level. He's got the extra central pawn, c3 versus a7. Not sure how to assess. I shouldn't be better at least. I could also go rook a5 cd. Maybe that is a more correct way of doing it. Forcing him to make the decision immediately because then it's, well, then it doesn't have rook a c5. So we'll go cd here. I have to be careful my bishop doesn't get trapped to some d5 as well. So, I think, however, well, okay, if he recaptures the queen, I'll take his queen. But if he takes e or c, I'm going to take on b2. I don't think he's got any nasty rook moves. He's got rook takes a7, but then it's, uh, he's got some problem on g2 at the end. I thought, can I not play either queen b7 immediately or take them? queen b7? Queen b7, bishop f3, I take it. Maybe he's going f3. So it's probably my actually, I'm not sure, maybe even my actually to take immediately. Now f3, I'll take the knight, he takes on e4, and do have a good way of attacking his somewhat compromised structure. Guess we'll see. So bishop h6 first, then bishop f4, or knight f6 first. Let's go knight f6. I was also wondering about rook c8 first, but I thought he'd get play down the f-file. But maybe now queen d. Okay, so to he can exchange rooks if he wants now with rook b1. Um, so he does. <laughs> I'm not going to answer the doorbell. Uh, I don't have any way. I can play some weird moves like queen h1. Do 
Do I have a way to put some pressure on him here? He's probably going to go e5 next move. I'm putting his structure and accessing his pieces. So can I do something weird? I could bishop h6. So e5, knight d5. Trying to keep his pieces under wraps. Yes, yeah, so I thought he played this. So again, he's threatening to play e5. Uh, I go queen h1. Probably bishop f4 is fine for him. And yeah, I'm coming to the conclusion I'm probably not actually better here. This e5 move is going to liberate his position. Let's try and just keep. Do I want to exchange those? Hard for me to say. We'll jump straight. I wasn't sure whether one wanted this bishop active on e5 or this slightly weak pawn. I think probably both are equal. This time, let's just be careful I don't blunder a piece. Trying to play it on a bit. Sorry for the background noise. My dog shakes. Uh, how to do this? I want to play h5 just so that my. I have a square. Okay, it's not going to activate its queen. I don't need to worry about that. e3 is too weak. But. Okay, so if I check, I guess he's retreating. If I check either way. Oh, wow. Okay, that's probably also fine. Looks a bit weird, but. Seems to be a bit careful now because I'm allowing him the first ball. Should be drawn. This wasn't perfect technique by me by any means. I don't think there's a way for him to push the deep on while preventing some lots of checks. Let's keep. He could somehow have his queen on a better square. Yeah, chances again, but at least I uh, didn't uh, overpress too much. And now I believe it's four three for me. So I have draw odds going to this game, but uh, playing for a draw with white always has dire consequences. So play normally, and he's. Decided to switch to a modern to get some definitely double edged positions. The line that I generally play isn't uh, the safest, but I think it's quite principled. Let's move on to play him. I think, yeah, he wanted to take this. Remember exactly the orders here. The thing is, the knight get, is so strong, he can get to g5. So, hence why he was happy to uh, exchange it immediately once I went knight h3. We tend to have castling on both sides. Pawn storms, double edged stuff going on. So, a decent opening for him. But uh, at the same time, I've got the bishop pair. There's nothing wrong with my position. I could take this. That's like some sort of dragador. I'm more used to being on the other side of the board. So if knight takes c5, I was hoping e5 was good. 
DE, the night is hanging after everything gets exchanged. So you'd have to move the night out of the way or play some B4. You can do B4 or in a couple of positions. If he goes knight hc5, e5, then b4, then I can take his knight. He takes on c3, I take on g7. He takes on d2, and it's not check if I just move my king, so I get time to take his rook. And that's the end of the game. So maybe he should play b4 now. And I should be deciding where that knight belongs. I could jump into d5. Well, that is opening up his bishop. Or I go to a4. A4 is the natural move for me. But then queen a5. And then knight into b6. Knight takes b6, cb. I don't see why he should be mating me there. b4, knight d5 is the other line. Knight d5, queen d5. So he doesn't go for either. dc. Now. I think he probably calculated all those lines and decided it wasn't working for him. Is e5 going to be a slightly better ending for me? I don't know if I have more, but let's go for the forcing line. I think it would be very comfortable with my rook on a better square. So we've exchanged pawns are still level. Structures are imbalanced, which favors him, at least for his winning chances. But uh, now I want to get this rook involved. Am I going to go back to h1 or play f4? a4 immediately is also very tempting. Let's play f4. Gives away the g4 square, but at least for me, my rook is immediately in the game. I guess I'll move this king. There we go. Okay, I wasn't sure if I should have played a4 at some point, but a4, b4, and I didn't see a perfect square for my knight. Mm. If I'm ready to play b4, I right? Suppose. Am I worried about before night before? Not particularly, I don't think. Let's get my pawns supporting one another. My bishop's going to go to long diagonal. Maybe before night before night e4. This is ideal. But then again, the long diagonal looks to favor me. Mm -hmm. Now, while exchanges are good for me in principle, I think I'd like to at least attempt to get my bishops. So I'll come back. I don't want to have to go into some slightly worse ending and suffer. At least I might go into it anyway, but I'd prefer to try and keep any edge going. The mind piece, I want to exchange for a pair of knights. Then he's going to find it hard to hassle my bishops. And then I can slowly push on the queen side. Not so easy for him to create a pass pawn. The big weakness of my position is a pawn on g3, but that's difficult to attack. So I take on c6, he'll take on d3. I don't see a clever way, so let's get rid of those. Try and get a pair of knights off. I doubt he'll exchange them. But g5 is going to be a quite nice square for my knight if he doesn't. Okay, where should I go with this bishop? Just retreat, bravely run away. Now my knight can. Oh, it was starting to jump into c5 or g5. So it's gone knight b7 to stop the immediate jump. And with the idea, knight g5 could be met with knight d6. Maybe I should have started with that and then c3. I don't know if this is 
should be fine. Okay, let's take the bishop again. To start forcing these pieces backwards, I think. I feel like if I take it, bishop takes, bishop takes b7 is a way of trying to force a draw, but it might be a slightly it's a bit of a cowardly way of forcing a draw. I, know, I might have to slap it a little bit. So I prefer to do it to be cowardly this way. I don't think he wants to play f5. He prefer that square for his pieces. So I can sit like this. Yeah, this time he plays it. I said I wanted to exchange a pair of knights, but I don't want him to exchange that's with bishops if I can help it. Hence why I went knight f2. I do have to be a bit careful now because he's going to jump into e4. My pawn and g3 is becoming a bit vulnerable. I'll allow that exchange because g6 is weak enough. Okay, let's have a look at his pawns over here. And. I have a good way of proceeding here. He's going to bishop d6 next move. Let's just try and these pieces seem to be on good squares at the moment, so I have to be a bit careful I'm not get my bishop trapped. I'm not sure why I uh, didn't play c4 when I had the opportunity there. So let's go round the back and try and attack this g6 pawn. So we've got bishop g8, bishop f2, bishop h7, take, take. Not ideal, but. I've got 97 check if he doesn't exchange knights. As long as I don't mouse at the piece or get disconnected, the hard work should be done here. I say as I, I'll just take that. <laughs> bishop and knight versus uh, bishop of opposite colors. It shouldn't be too difficult to hold. Try and not get my bishop trapped. These pawns can just march up the board. Let's not keep my king, bishop, a nice hawk check apart. They're close enough, but I don't think there should be anything to worry about. It's getting ready to play. Try and at least block my pawns. I mean, it's a draw if I lose these pawns as well. It really shouldn't be. Anything problematic here. Although, why I've given my king so close to the pawn, I'm not sure. I still keep my king in the center. Anyway. Quite impressive by me still, but uh, the position I had to somehow be playing, to being forced to hold this. But I don't think it should be possible for him to even force my king from the middle of the board. Round and round he goes. Not so much to comment 
update on in this session. I'll draw as long as I don't bunt my vision. Let's keep my vision close. I'm doing quite a good job of uh, giving him hope that I am going to bunt this vision. He's threatening a fork again. Let's just get my king away. I should just be giving this b6 pawn as well. I said, what, b5 pawn, just so that. Yeah, let's just, now I just need to make 50 moves without bundling my bishop. Whereas with that pawn on the board, like, if I'd given that pawn already, it would be a draw by now. So if I go to h1 and a8 with a bishop in this position, well, maybe not h1, actually. Walking potential on g3, but a8 and f3 if it doesn't lose, like the right squares. Still not very impressive, but, uh, It came to this. So now the squares, still a8 is fine. g2 is also fine, or f3 if I can go there. So it's trying to get me into the uh, other side of the board. I guess the dark square. It's the one that will cause me some issues. So if I'm going to get forced into a corner, it should be a light colored corner. <sighs> okay. Well, that was uh, <laughs> not a very convincing finish, but I believe I got over the line there. Thanks. I was. Uh, <laughs> I felt sure I was going to wander my bishop there at the end as well and uh, keep the match going. Yeah, that's. Uh, I don't really know what happens now. I never thought I'd get out of the group, so I didn't look any further. <laughs> well, now actually you are going to play against the super GMs from Monday. You start the final, so okay. uh, I don't know if you have seen the final, but we have like the. Mm, the top, almost the top eight players. Magnus is going to play, Caruana, and Wesley So, well, Maxim Bashir Lagrav, all the big names. So, well, and so you're going probably to Probably the them. end of the road for me. That's a, a good fan. <laughs> well, who knows? So, we are okay. going to keep in contact, and on Monday uh, starts this very big final. Okay. okay. Look forward to it. Okay. We are, you can say goodbye, and then we are going offline. Okay, well, thanks everyone for following. Uh, again, it got a bit too stressful at the end there, but uh, staggered over the line again. And uh, I'll be back next week against some of the superstars. So that'll be fun. Look forward to seeing you then. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen. 34 and 8. Okay, good game, Alresa. I, I mean, I just was way out of shape, but he deserves full credit. One of the most popular Chess 24 formats is back now. The tournament where top players not only battle it out on the board, but stream their thoughts live as they play. Eight qualifying tournaments with eight players each. Only one winner per qualifier. The eight winners will play against eight Super GMs in the final of the Banter Series. Awesome prizes for the winners. Plus, the top two players qualify for the next Magnus Carlsen Chess Tour. Watch it all on Chess24.